Nuruldin Zangi, born in 1117 and died in 1174. After 400 years of unrivaled political supremacy and military domination of the Middle East, the Muslims became politically disunited during the 11th century. Hitherto the Abbasids had ruled the Islamic world without much opposition, but by the middle of the 11th century the Abbasid had become fragmented into several fiefdoms. Thus, like the Seljuks and the Buwayids became a separate independent political power at the time. If the political situation in the Middle East was bad, then the situation in the Islamic West was equally gloomy. After the Umayyads rule of Islamic Spain came to an abrupt end in 1031, political chaos and anarchy became the order of the day in that part of the world and this prompted the revitalized European nations to flex their muscles and reassert their political authority in and around the Mediterranean Sea, pushing the Muslims back further into the east. Although the rise of the Seljuk dynasty did usher in a period of peace and prosperity for a time. After the death of the Seljuk ruler Malik Shah in 1092, this dynasty also began to decline rapidly as political rivalry and social chaos spread across much of the Muslim world. The Crusaders entered the Muslim sphere of influence in 1096 and established a Crusader kingdom in Palestine. After capturing Jerusalem, Islam's third holy city, the Crusaders threatened to overwhelm the entire Islamic East until Sultan Nur al-Din Zangi, the famous Saint King of the Zangi dynasty, emerged to rally the Muslim world to confront the Crusaders for the first time. Nur al-Din Mahmud Zangi, known as Nur al-Din Zangi for short, was born in the northern Iraqi city of Mosul. His father, Imad al-Din Zangi, was a Turkish military commander who at the time was in the service of the Seljuks. As an accomplished military commander and a teacher of the Sultan's two sons, Imad al-Din led a privileged lifestyle, surrounded by much wealth and luxury. Young Nur al-Din was therefore brought up and educated in his father's luxurious and secluded mansion in Mosul. Being learned, Imad al-Din ensured his son received a thorough education in Arabic and Islamic sciences and young Nur al-Din was known to have been very pious during his early years. In 1127, when Nur al-Din was only 10, the Seljuk ruler Sultan Mahmud II appointed Imad al-Din governor of Mosul, and this prompted the latter to take preemptive actions to arrest and the decline of Islamic political power military might. As a gifted strategist and military commander, he could see the signs of weakness within the Seljuk administration and across the Islamic East, and he was determined to stop the rot, and thus soon after becoming governor he declared his independence from the Seljuks, and established a separate political entity consisting of the cities of Sinjar, Nasibin, Jazirat, Ibn Umar, and Haran, with his political headquarters based in Mosul. A year later, he took advantage of the chaos which prevailed in Aleppo at the time, and added that city to his expanding empire. He then annexed the territories of Hama and Hims, but to his huge disappointment he failed to capture the historic city of Damascus. As soon as Imad al-Din began to flex his muscle, the rule of Damascus and the Crusader kingdom in Palestine felt threatened by his growing power, which prompted them to unite against him. Not willing to fight on two fronts simultaneously, he turned his attention towards Edessa, the capital of the oldest crusader state in the Muslim world. The capture of the city by the Muslims under the leadership of Imad al-Din in 1144 sent a shudder through the ranks of the crusaders and reinvigorated the Muslims' determination to drive out the crusaders from the Islamic East. The fall of Edessa was a truly historic event, for it marked the beginning of the end of the Crusaders' presence in the Muslim world, and the first major victory of Islam 
over its Frankish adversaries. Two years after the capture of Edessa, Imad al-Din was murdered by his bodyguard in 1146, as the news of his death spread across the Zangid kingdom. Chaos and confusion ensued until Nur al-Din, his second son, emerged to restore peace and order across the region. Tall, slim, dark-skinned, bearded, and equally charming and gentle, Nur al-Din succeeded his father as a sultan of the Zangid kingdom in 1146 at the age of 29. Like his father, Nur al-Din was brave, intelligent, and a learned ruler. However, Unlike his father, he was a devout Muslim, whose piety and virtues turned him into a potent symbol of Islamic goodness and restitude. And as a ruler and statesman, the Sultan was determined to reunite the Muslim world under the banner of Islam and drive out the Crusaders from the Islamic East. Although the liberation of Jerusalem from the grip of its Frankish invaders was one of his foremost long-term objectives, immediately on becoming Sultan, his first priority was to establish his own political authority across the Zangid kingdom. After appointing his brother, Saif al-Din, governor of Mosul and his surrounding territories, he moved to Aleppo to take care of that strategically important principality. And on his arrival in Syria, he received news that Adisa had again fallen into the hands of the enemy. Determined not to allow Adisa to remain in the hands of the Crusaders for long, for that he would have sent the wrong message and undermined Muslim morale. He organised an expeditionary force and marched into Edessa at lightning speed. He arrived there even before the Crusaders could organise their defences properly, and seeing him marching on Edessa with a large army prompted the Crusaders to flee, leaving the city in the hands of the brave Nur al-Din. The recapture of Edessa without a fight not only won him widespread acclaim, but also helped to consolidate his position as a supreme ruler of the Zangid dynasty. From a strategic point of view, the Sultan's political power and authority was further strengthened by the instigators of the Second Crusade, who, instead of taking Edessa or Aleppo, foolishly attacked Damascus, whose ruler, Muin al-Din Unar, was the only Muslim ruler to have allied himself with the Crusader kingdom in Palestine. However, the Crusader siege of Damascus backfired in a spectacular faction when Muin al-Din's forces inflicted a crushing defeat on the powerful Frankish army. A year after the Franks' humiliating defeat at the Battle of Damascus, Muin al-Din died leaving the door wide open for Sultan Nur al-Din to move in and further expand his empire. As expected, in 1149, the Sultan captured Antioch and five years later added Damascus to his expanding empire. As a seasoned politician, he captured both of these cities through combination of diplomacy and limited warfare. Inspired by his desire and determination to reclaim Jerusalem from the Crusaders, Nur al-Din now became a powerful adversary of the Crusader kingdom. Soon, his call for an armed struggle against the Crusaders began to reverberate across the Islamic East, winning the 37-year-old monarch much-needed support and recognition across the Muslim world. With Jerusalem now very much in his reach, his dream of liberating Islam's third holiest site from the grip of the Crusaders seemed a real possibility. But his plans were thwarted by a powerful earthquake, which struck Syria in 1157 and completely devastated the country. And in that same year, he fell seriously ill, confined to his bed for a year and a half. Ibn al waqar his personal physician did not expect him to survive, but thanks to his tenacity and resolve, Nur al-Din eventually made a full recovery. Again, as a sultan contemplated the possibility of taking the fight to the crusaders in Jerusalem, he received news of Byzantine military activity in the north of Syria. And when he made contact with the Byzantine emperor, Manuel, 
The latter assured him that he had no intention of attacking the Zungid territories. Even so, the presence of the Byzantine forces close to his borders prevented the Sultan from launching an expedition against the Franks. Most unexpectedly during this period, Egypt rather than Palestine became the main theatre of warfare. Indeed, the Sultan's forces played a central role in reclaiming this strategically important country from the Fatimids. After Egypt became a Fatimid stronghold during the 10th century, it was ruled by a succession of caliphs who saw themselves as rivals of the Abbasid caliphs in Baghdad. But by the middle of the 12th century, the Fatimid grip on Egypt had become very precarious, so much so that from 1163 to 1169, the Fatimids clashed with the Franks and the Zangids on more than one occasion over the rich prize that was Egypt. At the instance of his gifted general, Asad al-Din Shirku, the uncle of the famous Salah al-Din, Saladin, Sultan Nur al-Din eventually authorised a large-scale military expedition against Egypt in order to add this country to his empire. Three determined fighters thus clashed with each other to gain control of Egypt. They were Shawar, an Egyptian minister who seized power in Cairo, in 1162, and rule the country with an iron fist. Amalric, a Frankish ruler who was eager to annex this strategically important Muslim country. And the third was Shirku, the Kurdish general in the service of Sultan Nur al-Din. These three men fought each other for nearly a decade to gain control of Egypt, until Shirku, assisted by his young nephew Salah al-Din, finally triumphed in 1169. His victory enabled Nur al-Din to add Egypt to his expanding empire. However, after Shirku's unexpected death, young Salah al-Din exercised power in Egypt on behalf of Sultan Nur al-Din. And although Salah al-Din remained loyal to the Sultan, in reality he came to be seen as an independent ruler in his own right. As time passed, Sultan Nur al-Din's dream of reclaiming Jerusalem from the grip of the Crusaders began to slowly fade away. Confined to his bed as a result of an angina attack, his health was now deteriorating rapidly. When his doctors wanted to operate on him, he refused to give them permission, saying that nature should take its course, though he was unable to liberate Islam's third holy city from the Crusaders. The credit for unifying the Islamic East must go to Sultan Nur al-Din. More importantly, he paved the way for Salah al-Din to take the fight to the Crusaders and re-establish Islamic political authority across the region. As an unusually patriotic Muslim, he was very eager to see the flag of Islam flying high over Jerusalem and the rest of the Muslim world. And by all account, he was a just, pious and generous ruler who possessed a truly sublime character and personality. Not surprisingly, renowned historians like Ibn al-Athir, Ibn Khaliqan and Ibn al-Jawzi have lavished much praise on him and referring to him as the saint king of Islam. Indeed, according to Ibn al-Athir, when the Sultan's wife once complained to him that she did not have enough money to meet their family's needs, he told her she could not have any more, for all the money and wealth kept at the Beit al-Man, the public treasury, belonged to the public. He was not prepared, he said, to cast himself into the fire by wrongfully consuming public money. Also, being very learned, he loved the company of the ulama, the religious scholars, and shunned materialistic values and practices. He encouraged his officials to serve the public with honesty, dedication and care. He led such an exemplary lifestyle, that even the bold and stubborn Salahadi never dared to cross his path. When Ayyub, the father of Salahadin, once informed that his son wished to break his contract with Sultan Nur al -Din, he told his son in no uncertain terms that he would never tolerate any form of disobedience or disloyalty to the master of Aleppo. Ayyub's devotion to Sultan Nur al -Din may have surprised Salahadin, but it certainly did not surprise those who knew their master well. Referring to Sultan Nur al-Din, 
the historian Ibn al-Athir, wrote, I've studied the careers of the rulers of the past, but apart from the first four caliphs and Umar ibn Abdulaziz, there has been no prince so liberal and so pious, so law-abiding and so just as Nur al-Din. Sultan Nur al-Din Mahmud Zangi, the famous saint king of Islam, passed away at the age of 61 and was buried in Damascus. The news of his death came like a thunderbolt from the heavens and the people of Syria crammed into the mosques to pray for his soul. The son of Zangi continued to live in our memories to this day, for he was a true mujahid, a warrior, who devoted his entire life to the service of Islam. Is there any wonder then that today young children grow up across the Muslim world listening to stories about the virtues, heroic deeds and achievements of the son of Zangi.